everyone, this is Matt Tu Show with Intro Stats, and today we're looking at a very famous topic, how to analyze a normal quantitative data set. So let's get right to it. So um, sort, sort of uh, just to review a little bit, we've talked about that there's two types of data, categorical data and quantitative data. We said quantitative data is numerical measurement data, so it's numbers usually that are measuring something. Uh, usually has units and averages are involved. So whenever you're dealing with a quantitative data set, there's always a, a few kind of key things that go with a quantitative data set. And I put them up here just as sort of a frame of reference. So we want to know what's the shape of the data set. Quantitative data has a unique shape. Um, categorical data doesn't really have a shape because it, you can really put the categories in any order you want and it make, makes the bar graph look a little different but it doesn't really have a unique shape. Quantitative data actually has a shape and you actually want to know what the shape of your data is. It actually becomes a very important topic. Um, you also want to know the average of the data set and what we want is we want an average that is sort of close to the center of the graph to be more accurate. There's lots of different averages in statistics, a lot of people don't know that, and only certain averages are accurate in certain circumstances. We also would like to know how spread out the data set is or how much variability does the data set have. Uh, we like to find what the typical values in the data set would be. And we'd like to know if there's any unusual values or what we call outliers. Outliers are unusual values. So whenever you're analyzing a quantitative data set, have those uh, five things in mind, right? Shape, center, spread, typical, and outliers. Okay, so those five things we always want to address when we're analyzing quantitative data. But today is really about something called normal data. Normal is one of uh, the most famous shapes in, in, uh, in quantitative data. So we're going to look at that. So I, I always like to give a, an example with context so you can kind of have an idea. So I just did a simple example. Um, again, I'm showing you a lot of these calculations just so you can see how things work and what, what we mean by certain uh, statistics. But um, remember that this is really usually done on a computer program. You'd use, use a program uh, like StatCato or StatKey to go ahead and have, do all these calculations for you. You really don't do these by hand, especially as the data sets get really big. It becomes, you know, uh, it would be a nightmare to try to calculate these by hand. But I picked an example where, um, where it was a relatively small data set that we could sort of manage. So uh, I look at the weights of bricks, um, and uh, we're going to look at, uh, so these bricks, and we look at their weights in kilograms, and you can see here's the weights of the bricks in kilograms. This is my quantitative data set. It uh, looks like uh, the smallest one was 3 kilograms, and the heaviest one, heaviest brick was 70 kilograms. Um, so, that's a really big brick. Um, so, the, if we look at this X, X sometimes refers to uh, the numbers in the data set uh, when you're dealing with a quantitative data. Okay, so one of the first things, if I'm analyzing quantitative data, the first thing I really want to know is I want to know what the shape of the data set is. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to graph the data. A lot of people will tell you whenever you get data that you're going to analyze, the first thing you should always do is graph it, just to try to see what, what you're dealing with. So graphs become very, very important. So there's two main, um, there's actually three main quantitative graphs that we use a lot. Um, there's, there's others, there's more advanced ones, but for the, for the intro class, probably we could start with dot plots and histograms. So a dot plot simply puts a dot uh, on a number line for every single number in your data set. So you'll see there's a dot at 3, and here's a dot at 7, and looks like a bunch of dots in the 30s, and look, a couple dots in the early 40s there, just like our data. So basically put a dot in every, um, for every number in the data set. 
Now, um, this can become a big mess. So if you're talking about, you know, like, you know, 2,000 dots or something, just dots everywhere, it becomes kind of a mess, and it's kind of sometimes hard to figure out what, what the shape is from dot plots. Though so this one I think we could figure out pretty, pretty good, but uh, sometimes the dot plots can get really, really messy. Another a graph that the computer can calculate for you that's actually a much easier graph to deal with shape is what we call a histogram. So think of this as a bar graph that's used for quantitative data. Um, so be careful when you see, uh, I think we mentioned this in the um, categorical data with software video that a bar chart is a bar graph for categorical data. A histogram is actually a bar, a bar graph that's specially designed for quantitative data. So the way you want to think about a histogram is it's connected to the dot plot. It's just counting how many dots are in certain areas of the graph. So I can kind of see here, um, this, I broke, my, broke this up into sort of three sections, uh, three bins as some, some stat books would call it, or some, sometimes in stat programs you'll see them say three buckets or three bars, it's just how many bars you want. The smaller the data set, the less bars you want. So you don't want a data set, this data set only had 12 numbers. I don't want 12 bars because that's not really going to help me see the shape. I want less bars. So usually my golden rule is if you got a small data set, I usually use three bars or three bins. That, that works pretty well for trying to figure out what the shape might be. So if we look at this, it counted that there was actually 10 dots in this section of the graph. You can kind of see there's the 10 dots right there. And then there's one dot in this section and one dot in that section. You can see the two dots right up here. So it's just counting how many dots are in each section. And if you see this, you can see that the, 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 um, the histogram has a very unique shape. It has the highest bar in the middle, and the right and left tails are about uh, symmetric. In other words, it kind of has about... It, as it gets away from the middle, you have less and less dots. And that's sort of what we mean by normal or normally distributed. So this is the shape of, of what we call a normal data set. Um, and I kind of think of it this way. If I kind of made a, a smooth curve over it, you can kind of see that. It kind of looks like an upside down or a right side up bell, right? You know, if you've... Uh, ever uh, gone to um, Philadelphia and saw the Liberty Bell. That's what it looks like. Right? It looks like a bell. So sometimes people refer to normal as bell-shaped. So bell-shaped. And from the dot plot you can actually kind of see that same shape. Uh, if I kind of went, you know, kind of I got more dots in the middle and as I get away from the middle I have less and less dots. It has that sort of bell shape to it. Now this is um, normal data is there is some more advanced kinds of graphs that measure just how perfectly normal is it how much does it match up with a perfectly normal curve uh, but for now we're just trying to see if the data is sort of in the ballpark of normal and usually that would happen if your highest bar uh, if you're in a three bins your highest bar should be in the middle okay um, so that's sort of, and you have most of your dots are sort of in the middle. As you get away from the middle, you have less dots. Uh, we refer to that as normal data or bell-shaped. So sometimes you'll hear people say bell-shaped, but in stats, we usually don't say bell-shaped. We say normal or normally distributed. That's the shape. Okay, so this data has sort of an almost normal shape. That's really important because the shape determines what statistics are actually accurate and what statistics are not accurate. Okay, that's why you always find the shape first. So once you find the shape, then you'll know which uh, statistics are actually accurate. Now for the um, normal data, the, the statistic that's accurate for the average or center is the mean. The mean. The mean average. Uh, this is the most common average. This is the one that most people know about. When you ask people to take your average, they're usually going to add up the numbers and divide by how many numbers were in the data set. Um, that's a, that's the, probably, it is the most common average. 
but it's actually only accurate when the data has this shape. When the data does not have this shape, we actually want to stay away from the mean. We don't want to use the mean because it's not a very accurate average. So that's where one of the big keys here is that the mean goes with normal. So when, someone's, when a data is normal, then you're allowed to use the mean as your average. So let's calculate the mean. So the mean, I calculated it down here. Sometimes a mean of a data set or some sample data is referred to as x with a bar over it. So x bar is sometimes denoted as a sample mean. And this is the formula you'll sometimes see in stat books. It says sum, this big E looking symbol means sum or add up. X is referring to all the numbers in the data set. So this is just a fancy way of saying add up the numbers in the data set. Now N is called sample size or how many, how many numbers are in your data. So in our case our N was 12. If you count there was 12 numbers in the data set. So I'm going to put that down here. N equals 12. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to add up the numbers, so 3 plus 30 plus 31 plus 35 plus 36 and so on, all the way to 70, and then divide by 12. And it looks like we get this, 36.083. If I round that, now this brings us to sort of where do you want to round statistics. A lot of times um, in a computer program, they'll just give you a bunch of decimals and then have, let you round to whatever accuracy you want. Um, one thing about it is that um, sort of a good rule of thumb is to round quantitative statistics to one more place value to the right than the original data values have. So if I, if I look at the original data values, they all end in the ones place. There's no numbers to the right of the decimal. There's zero numbers to the right of the decimal. So um, what you do is you go one more place value to the right than your original data. So since these numbers have zero plate numbers to the right of the decimal, my statistic I calculate from this data would probably be rounded to having one number to the right of the decimal. In other words, one more place value than the original data has. If my original data had two numbers to the right of the decimal, then I would round my mean to the third number to the right of the decimal. Does that make sense? So one more place value than the original data. So I